Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at ways of estimating annual cost of manufacturing for a chemical plant. Now we are doing this for Turton et al.'s textbook on process design, and we are looking at chapter eight on estimation of manufacturing costs. There are three categories of manufacturing costs. The first of these are direct costs. Direct means that they vary directly with the production rate. Now, they may or may not be exactly proportional to the production rate, but in some way, if the production rate goes up, this cost will go up. We also have fixed costs. These do not vary with the production rate. They relate to production function but it's going to be the same amount whether you make one ounce of material or one million tons of material. That cost will not change. And then we have general expenses. A lot of times we're just going to call these overhead. These are going to be the costs of doing business, but they are probably only remotely related to actual production. So let's take a closer look at these. Direct manufacturing costs are going to include things like your raw materials, your waste treatment, your utilities, operating labor, supervisory and clerical labor, maintenance and repairs, operating supplies, laboratory charges, and patents and royalties. Now you'll notice the notation listed here for each of these. C subscripted with two letters that indicate which category it is are things that we will be determining later. So raw materials, waste treatment, utilities, and operating labor we'll be addressing within this chapter. But then we have some others that are going to be related to other costs. So supervisory and clerical labor we're going to estimate that that's about 18% of our general operating labor cost. Maintenance and repairs are going to be proportional to the fixed capital investment. FCI is our fixed capital investment. That's what we were estimating in chapter seven. Operating supplies are also proportional to our fixed capital investment. Lab charges will be related most closely to our operating labor costs. And patents and royalties are generally going to be a very small percentage of the total cost of manufacturing. Now, of course, that's what we're trying to figure out. COM is the cost of manufacturing. And so we'll have just write this into the formula. We'll figure it out later. Now, if you do this, the direct ma manufacturing cost a formula that can be used to approximate this is given here at the bottom of the page. Now again, recognize that these there's a lot of estimation that's going into this. We're going to be estimating how much those raw materials, waste treatment, etc. are going to cost. And then we have multipliers that are an additional estimate. Okay. Now we have fixed manufacturing costs. This is going to include depreciation, which is going to be covered in chapter nine. For this chapter, and a lot of times just as a quick estimate, we're gonna approximate it as being 10% of our fixed capital investment cost. Again, that's the chapter seven price that we paid. Local taxes and insurance are also going to be proportional to the cost of the equipment, so 0.032 of the fixed capital investment. Plant overhead costs are going to be related to both the operating labor and the fixed capital investment. Now these are going to include accounting, right? If you're purchasing more materials, you are going to need to have more staff to do that. So accounting and purchasing. Fire protection and safety, the larger the facility is, the more you'll pay for this. Employee services, employee benefits, general engineering, all of these things are just sort of going to be clumped together here. Now recognize that, again, these are estimates. And when you're talking about things like fire protection and safety, 
and you're working in a plant that has very low risk, okay, doesn't have a lot of dust, doesn't have explosive materials, etc., then you're going to not need to spend quite as much on this item, whereas another facility that has a lot of materials that are highly flammable, uh, explosive, etc., is going to have a large cost there. So these are guidelines. But this formula, we're going to approximate the fixed manufacturing costs with this formula, where depreciation may be approximated as 0.1 times the FCI, or we will refine that estimate in Chapter 9. And finally, we have our general expenses. Now, general expenses are going to be things like administrative costs, our buildings, our salaries, and so forth. These are going to have a little bit of relationship to the size of the facility, so the fixed capital investment, and how many employees we have, so the cost of operating labor. We're going to have some salaries, um, our salespeople, our marketing people, because if we just rely on that our customers today will always be our customers, you're not going to be in business for very long. So we're going to have some distribution and sales costs about 11% of the total cost of manufacturing. And then we're going to need to have research and development. This will include salaries, it'll include some equipment, some supplies for the research and development. This should be typically about 5% of the cost of manufacturing. This is one of those items where occasionally you'll read about a company that decides that they don't want to spend money in this area anymore or they're going to cut costs for any of these items, a lot of times people will make a short-sighted decision that they should cut these costs. And yes, you can save money in the short term, but these are the kinds of operations that keep your business thriving, that keep you with new customers for the future. So these general expenses are important. We estimate them with 17% of the operating labor cost, 16% of the cost of manufacturing, and 0.9% of the fixed capital investment. If we combine these, we get the total manufacturing cost, or the CON, and we can just add up everything we had before and get this expression here, okay? Now this just says plus depreciation. A lot of times we're going to figure out what the cost of manufacturing is without depreciation and just hold on that until chapter 9. In that case, we're going to use COM subscript D. A subscript in this case means that it's without the depreciation, okay? In which case, I've got COM on this side, I've got COM over here, I combine these two terms, divide by the common... Uh, factor in the front, and I end up with this expression here. We also could do this where we just approximate depreciation with 10% of the fixed capital investment, in which case the cost of manufacturing is going to be approximately this final expression here. So let's look at an example. We're going to build a new plant. We want it to produce 75 million kilograms per year of toluene uh, with a fixed capital investment of 23 million. And they have these various cost data. So 14 million per year in raw materials, 1.8 in waste treatment, 800,000 per year in utilities, 400,000 per year operating labor. And we want to, based on this, figure out what these various costs are. So let's look at this. So these are the given values rewritten in terms of the notation for these formulas. So I've got all of my annual costs here, and I have my fixed capital investment, not per year, this was once at the very beginning, and I have my production rate, okay? So let's now look at the direct manufacturing cost, the fixed manufacturing costs, and the general expenses. So those formulas for the direct cost, we're going to take the cost of our raw materials, so 14 million, plus 
plus our waste treatment, 0 0.8 million, plus our waste treatment, okay, I got those in the wrong order there, plus 1.8, plus 1.33 times 0 0.4 million, plus 0 0.03 times the cost of manufacturing, which I don't know, plus 0 0.069 times 231 million. And so all of this was in millions. And so our direct manufacturing cost is 18.719 plus 3% of the cost of manufacturing, all times 10 to the 6th. Now we can do this for the fixed manufacturing cost. This formula gives us 1.8472 times 10 to the 6th plus our depreciation. And finally, we can do our general expenses, which gives us a quarter of a million, roughly, uh, plus 0.16 times the cost of manufacturing. Now, if I wanted to then determine the cost of manufacturing, I'm simply going to add these up, or I could use the formula that we had on a previous slide. But if I just add these up, it's 25.65 plus the depreciation. Uh, actually, that was not adding them up. That was using the formula where I divided through by the constant. Okay, so let's now assume that the depreciation is, in fact, 10% of the fixed capital investment. So therefore, 23 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. And let's look at that. Now, when I did this, and my math may be wrong, but roughly 27.95 times 10 to the sixth. If you use these in the direct manufacturing cost, it's about 19.56 times 10 to the sixth. The fixed manufacturing cost is 4.15 times 10 to the sixth. And the general expenses about 4.75 times 10 to the sixth. What's important to note here is that the direct cost is about 70% of the total, and each of these others are roughly 15% of the total. So these are kind of the proportions you should expect to see. Now they do ask one final question, and that's the cost of manufacturing a kilogram of toluene. And to do that, we're just going to take the total cost okay, that much per year and divide by the mass of, uh, mass of toluene produced. So 75 times 10 to the 6th, and that's also per year. And so therefore, we end up with $0 $0.373 per kilogram and that was kilograms per year so the per year cancels I'm left with dollars per kilogram so these values how are we going to come up with the numbers that I need to plug in and the example they were given the fixed capital investment we know because we've all gone through chapter 7 and so I if I'm adding to an existing plant, I'm going to use the total module cost. If I'm doing a brand new plant, I'll use the grassroots cost. And I can use cap cost to estimate those. We will, in future lessons, be looking at ways that we can estimate the operating labor, raw materials, utilities, and waste treatment costs. So join me for future lessons. Thank you very much for your time.